Thanks, Will. How are you? It's great to be here. Listening to Tyler is so inspiring to, uh, to really hear Tyler. Every time I hear him, you know, uh, our business is really growing and, and it's taking off in such a steep trajectory. It's just unbelievable. Um, the time here in Utah is actually 1130. So, well, if it had been midnight, it might have been a problem for me because I turn into a pumpkin and, and, and have to go to bed. So anyway, it's only about 1130 over here. So um, it, it's wonderful to join your convention. Uh, frankly, I think John Hobby mentioned to me that if it hadn't been the COVID, uh, then we could have uh, been there in person. And then obviously, I think I love to visit Australia and, and the South Pacific again because it's such a wonderful place uh, to be there physically. Anyway, be that as it may, as Tyler say, all these Zoom calls, our business is growing. And I just thought I would share a few minutes with you to talk about uh, exactly what we have uh, in New Skin going forward. Uh, as usual, Tyler has uh, let the cat out of the bag and, and mentioned to you some of the products we'll be launching but I'll give you a bit more details behind them so that you can better understand why we're so excited uh, about these new products. Uh, but also perhaps I was thinking what I was going to talk to you about Zoom and, and I've been doing some Zoom calls with, um, with my family and all. And um, it, it reminds me of my family here in Newskin and uh, how I came into this family more than 22 years ago. So if I can share my screen with you, uh, I think we can sort of uh, start talking about uh, what we have. Let's see, share, and then, okay. So I, I'm hoping you can see the screen because Tyler works wonderfully well. So I'm assuming the same uh, thing is happening here. So as you well know, I, I was one of the co-founders in Pharmanex and that was back in 1995, yeah, about 95. And uh, the company was all on its own. And uh, we, we sort of really started the company uh, with a whole bunch of uh, pharmaceutical scientists and what we wanted to do was really to see whether we can apply all our drug discovery and all what we've done in uh, drug research and then turn our attention to a group of natural ingredients that we have been always been using uh, for drug discovery because we think there's a lot of value there and most drug companies are really not interested in natural products uh, but they rather have uh, a synthetic chemical uh, as a starting point for, for drug development because that's what they can protect uh, most uh, well and, and rather than just on a natural ingredient since it's been around for many years despite its value uh, most drug companies doesn't they don't see the, uh, the economic value in developing that as, as something uh, to maintain health uh, in humans anyway we actually love these natural ingredients so much, so much so that we started Pharmanex. And rather than doing drugs, we didn't want to do that. Uh, we really wanted to, to sort of use these natural ingredients to develop nutritional supplements because we think nutritional supplements, uh, by supplementing the diet with such natural products, you can actually help the body to, uh, to grow stronger and be much more healthy. So that's what we have been doing. Uh, in Pharmanax, and we were fairly successful. And in fact, if I share the next slide with you, um, fundamentally for three years, up to 98, we were very successful. Uh, we were in roughly 30,000 stores here in the United States alone, and we have become rather profitable. And so much so that we became well known as well. And, 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 um, we got well known enough that a company called New Skin uh, decided to contact us and sort of inquired from the very beginning to see whether they can actually license a particular product. And um, we sort of say, sure, you know, why don't we come along and we, we can have a chat. Frankly, I, at that 
point in time, back in the 90, late 90s, late 97, early 98, I have no idea what New Skin uh, was all about. In fact, I don't even know where Utah uh, was at that time because Farmanex was in Los Angeles. Anyway, so they came and, and visited with us and started to learn about this product. It was actually a product called Cholestin and uh, they got intrigued. And in fact, when we described how we developed that nutritional supplement through this unique R&D engine that we had developed and through a process uh, that is really uh, approximate what, how drugs are being manufactured and so on, uh, they, they really got more excited and more interested rather than licensing a particular product, they wanted to go and have a discussion on acquiring the whole company. So um, at the time, as I mentioned to you, we were rather profitable and, and really perhaps we were not that interested in being acquired, but uh, they, they, we spent a few days talking about it. We had very good investors, as you can see, um, we had raised more than 38 million uh, US dollars uh, to fund the company. And since we were profitable, uh, that was enough to keep us going and, and help us grow. Anyway, one thing led to another, and primarily when, when they discuss their business model, and, and Tyler was abs is absolutely right when he described what we're doing today. Even back then, more than 20 years ago, New Skin, as all of you know, was a drag selling company, and they described the model uh, very much to us, how they uh, market and launch product, and how it can actually be part of this business opportunity as uh, Tyler described it. So we, we listened and, and at the end of the day, I guess the question was, how did we become uh, part of New Skin? And uh, as you can see, I mean, they bought a company for 135 million. Uh, it was attractive, but we had other bidders too. In fact, one of the other bids uh, on the table is a, is a bid that we had from, uh, from a drug company, my previous company. So, and so the money uh, bid for intents and purposes, uh, they were not the major factor. What drove us uh, into the arms of New Skin was really about uh, we wanting to go international. Uh, we were just then back in the United States, Farmanex, and we knew going international on our own would take a lot of uh, significant investment. And New Skin, with their 600,000 uh, leaders around the world, even back then, uh, that would make it this international distribution uh, much, much easier. So in 1998, for, for, for those reasons, we decided to uh, be acquired by New Skin. I would like to think of it that uh, rather than New Skin acquiring uh, Pharmanex, we like to think that we in Pharmanex uh, allowed New Skin uh, to acquire us. Anyway, so that's what we did. So 20 years later, I think we continue and another important commitment that New Skin made was the uh, commitment to research and, and maintaining, if not growing this R&D engine that we had created. And uh, because the innovation, even back then was part and parcel of, uh, of New Skin and it continues to this day. In fact, it's getting better every year in terms of what they have committed uh, in innovation. Uh, it's a perfect bridge, the nutritional supplements coming in, New Skin already had a very robust uh, skincare line. So these two categories, when they come together, has made us a, a, a fairly uh, leading anti-aging company. So these are some of the uh, historical documents, if you will. Uh, these four products seen here, uh, for all intents and purposes, were the first set of products we had in Pharmanex that were selling in those 30,000 stores. And uh, it continues now only in, in, in the new, new skin world. And uh, it continued to be uh, really uh, some of the best sellers in, in the world of new skin. So these are just interesting that how, how we managed to come a long way over the last 20 years or so. So when we talk about the science, you know, what do we really do? Fundamentally, when we talk about science in new skin, 
uh, we just don't talk. Science is a discipline where you really have to do what you say and not just say what you say. In fact, I would consider that to be a competitive advantage insofar as many companies you, uh, today would claim that they are doing science as well. But when you scratch below the surface, you tend not to find this R&D engine. In other words, they don't have the 75 scientists that we have in our R&D centers. Uh, you don't have a $200 million innovation center purposefully built uh, to house the scientists to allow them to continue to innovate. So that's what we do in science. And, and we have focused on developing uh, and, and focusing on this area of anti-aging, if you will. But I like to think of it more in terms of youth preservation. But nonetheless, anti-aging is a term that we had used. So when you go at it uh, in, in, in sort of really slowing down the aging process, uh, most of us tend to uh, develop products that really cover up the signs or the symptoms of aging. And that's what even we in New Skin before age lock, if you will, uh, that's what we have been doing. We, we, we are, because the science did not allow us to really attack the fundamental sources of aging until recently. What we have been doing then, so that's a traditional approach and is to treat the signs or the symptoms of aging, as I mentioned. But now with age lock and the ability to identify the uh, genes relating to aging, uh, we have identified the fundamental sources of aging, and that's the new skin approach. You know, uh, this approach is far more meaningful because it addresses, as I say, at the genetic level, and and that usually translates to much much more effective and more uh, potent, uh, meaningful either nutritional supplements or a skincare product. So, and and the old paradigm has always been, right? I, I think, you know, one doesn't need to be a scientist uh, to remember that most of us tend to look at aging and say, there's really nothing you can do. Genes are what they are. You're born with your genes. You either have good genes or bad genes. Perhaps that's a little bit of a misnomer based on latest research. What really it means is that these genes can always perform uh, well and in a healthy manner if you allow them to do so. It's because of our lifestyle or because of a variety of other environmental factors uh, that we don't, uh, we, we, we continue to sort of in a way abuse these genes and therefore become a less, uh, less able to produce and function uh, as if you were a 20 year old, for example. So that's the really the insight that we have uh, leveraged that you can actually, if you can somehow restore or clean up these genes in some manner, uh, they can actually uh, start to express themselves in a more youthful manner. And that's a new paradigm. You know, you know we are now influencing uh, the expression or the functionality of age-related genes. And, and in doing that through our products, uh, whether it's a skincare product uh, affecting genes on the skin tissue, or other uh, nutritious or supplements that affect genes in the rest of the body, uh, what we are really intending to do is to get them back to a more useful state. That, in, in a nutshell, is what we have in HLOC science. That's, that's really what it describes it. And the reason why we think we remain uh, an exclusive, we, we have an exclusive hold on this type of science relating to aging it's because we also acquired a company now close to what, back in 2011, close to 10 years now. And, and, and that is a company, a biotech company called LifeGen Technologies. And uh, these are the two founding scientists. Uh, they are the professors, and they will become, the Crawler is a geneticist, and uh, Professor Weindrich is a physiologist studying the aging process. Their combination has actually led to creating one of the largest uh, genetic database, in other words, genetic information, how the aging process proceeds over time. And it is that database uh, that we acquired when, when we bought LifeGen because it's such an important, you know, information 
is is really very valuable, right? It's it's a it's something that we can access, and if we can have exclusivity to that kind of information, uh, then our scientists are the only ones who can actually address these age-related genes. So the technology uh, that we go about using is called this gene chip, and um, we can literally uh, evaluate the functionality or gene expression uh, of thousands of genes on a single chip. It's a, literally, it's actually a computer chip, a silicon wafer, uh, that instead of putting uh, bits and bytes on it, we tend to put uh, uh, DNA bits on it that can actually sense uh, what type of genes it will only uh, attach to a particular gene. And it produces this almost like a galaxy photograph or profile of gene expression on, on the right. And, and these, these are the type of uh, data that our scientists can actually look at. And we have millions of these kinds of data points uh, to look at. And that is why we think right now we, we really have an exclusive gene database on the aging process. Now, that's great at the genetic level. Does it really translate uh, to something meaningful at, at the visible level, at the tissue level, if you will? And this is just an example of one of the most seminal studies uh, conducted by uh, Tom Prawler and Richard Weindridge. And that is that uh, Richard Weindridge, if you remember, I mentioned he's a physiologist. He has actually has a colony of primates, and uh, these are rhesus monkeys, that he has followed through over the last 30 years. You know, that's about the average age of, of a primate, if you will. And uh, they, they're fed diets, uh, and you just follow them. There's no, no experimentation with them. For all intents and purposes, uh, purposes it's just observation uh, that, that Richard does. And uh, you notice on here, on the left, that's actually a, 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 a primate that has been fed a USDA or what we call a science-based, uh, the most nutritious diet that a primate should be having. And yet, in spite of that, you can see there is uh, there is uh, accelerate not accelerated aging, but there's actually the, 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 the primate gets older over time. Uh, these are twins, for instance. Um, they're twins, actually, uh, siblings. And uh, the right one, by contrast, is through a process where actually the Richard reduces the, uh, the diet uh, for that uh, particular animal group. And you can see that over its time course or through, throughout its aging process, you can see it maintains a very healthy looking. And so what causes that? And this is where we got excited is because all these functionality at the physiological level can be linked back to some changes in gene expression. And that's why uh, we use that information to develop the HLOC science, okay? So uh, after all those studies, I mean, that's over 30 years. Do you remember? I mean, I, I did mention to you these primates were studied over the course of, you know, over 30 years, so it takes a long time. It's very difficult for, for competitors uh, to be able to replicate this genetic database because it just takes time. You can't accelerate uh, that, that sort of accumulation of data points. Um, so we've all, based on that knowledge, this is uh, Y-SPAN, and this is our most advanced anti-aging supplement ever. Yeah, uh, it's, um, it, it's really a proprietary blend of several ingredients that are put together. And these ingredients are the one that we found to really uh, restore or at least uh, create a gene expression profile uh, that looks very much uh, that, that occurs in a youthful state. Um, and these are ingredients uh, that we, you can really can't find. In, in a diet alone, regardless of which diet that, uh, that you eat, uh, we were unable to find these ingredients. And in fact, even when we did find a diet containing a, one of these ingredients, uh, it doesn't exist in the right amount to uh, give you the, uh, the useful state of youth uh, gene expression. So, and, and uh, that's, that's why when we blended all these ingredients together, 
not a single ingredient is sufficient. And this again is something that uh, perhaps differentiate us from the rest of the competition. Uh, we like to think it's almost like a, a, a collection of natural ingredients that have been discovered through scientific studies that tend to give you a, a much more meaningful benefit than just a single ingredient, especially uh, when you look for uh, anti-aging benefits. And importantly, what we've done when we did all that, we have also now understand that uh, what it does, this UI span product, is really to sort of control or regulate uh, the aging defense mechanism. Our body, for intents and purposes, uh, has, has the ability to really bounce back. It's a very resilient uh, machine. And, and uh, so if you give it a chance uh, to do that, to bounce back, it will. And that's what Y-SPAN does, is to really help through uh, modulating this aging defense mechanisms uh, to, to get you back into a more useful state. Now we can do all that and, and if you're not careful, uh, we, the science would be good, but the raw materials that we get to start our product development process, they have to be of the highest quality. And this is what uh, we use, this 6S quality process. You know, that's what we uh, developed and, and um, sort of invented, if you will, in Pharmanex. When we founded Pharmanex, we really want to make sure that we have a, a quality process in place uh, that can actually allow us to make a consistent product that comes out from the other end. So the reason why it's called success is primarily because, you know, the steps that we take, uh, each one can be uh, identified by an S word, if you will. And I'll take you through quickly um, what it does in a minute. But what is the purpose of this? So this six step uh, success quality process, at the end of the day, if I'm looking uh, from the consumer perspective, uh, I'm hoping that we are giving you the confidence that our products are safe and uh, that's paramount to us. Uh, they are effective because there's not much point uh, putting a product together and, and it doesn't do any uh, or doesn't bring any meaningful benefits. And I've already mentioned it must be of a, cons of a consistency that is of the highest quality. And obviously it will be compliant with all regulatory uh, requirements around the world. So the first S is this selection uh, step. And this is really, we want to make sure that we have raw materials and especially we have to uh, source them from suppliers uh, around the world that, that these are the best ingredients they're giving us. Because if you put garbage in, it really doesn't matter how much science that you do your final product uh, will be garbage as well. And, and uh, we want to make sure that we select at even from the starting point at ground zero, we have materials that are clean and uh, free of any toxic chemicals or contaminants. Uh, that is really uh, one of the steps that we take. And it's related to the sourcing. You know, it's sometimes we can find high quality uh, raw materials but we can't get enough of them. And, and this uh, again is, uh, is something that uh, we worry about. So we want to make sure our sourcing team spends a lot of time making sure that we have enough of it to make our product is of great quality and our chemist will actually take samples of all these raw materials to make sure that the key actives, in other words, not every leaf have the, uh, not every leaf has the uh, active ingredients. So if it doesn't have it, uh, putting a ground up leaf in a capsule uh, doesn't really help because it will not have any benefits. So we have to analyze and make sure that the raw materials uh, have these uh, active ingredients. So when we've done all that and finally produce a, a finished product, uh, we must have specifications. And this is what we have to put, and you can see that uh, all our products uh, do contain what we call supplement facts or a nutrition label at the back of the bottle. And it lists the active compounds and has all the ingredients that we put in together 
some of these ingredients are necessary to 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 get a good consistent blend um, uh, because we need to have a consistent blend. We can't have one ingredient staying uh, in, 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 in a different location. It has to be a uniform blend before we put into our products. So this, this is what we call the uh, specification step. And again, um, our scientists, and it's the reason for our 75 scientists, uh, is because they can analyze and, and be able to make sure that every product that we make today is a product that we can reproduce and, and duplicate a year from now, five years from now. That's the reason why we standardize, we have uh, the uh, specifications and, and you can only do that uh, if, if, you, uh, if you test. And uh, now I, I think uh, people are beginning to appreciate uh, at, at this particular time in our, in, uh, of the year uh, where you can see how important it is to get testing because if you don't test, you won't have the data and you won't know uh, where you're heading to uh, in the going forward. So that's why that's how we standardize. I already mentioned about safety is an important step for us, uh, particularly for any microbial. These are natural products. Uh, they have microbial contamination. Heavy metals uh, would be another uh, group of uh, contaminants that we test regularly. And, and other things that we do that might not be uh, sort of a consistent in making a safe product. So, all right, we got this final product together. So how do we prove it? And this is where the clinical studies kick in and the other uh, functional studies that we do in science. And that is to make sure that when we make a claim for a product, that claim is supported and substantiated by scientific study. Uh, I think uh, that's the only way to make a claim. Uh, I don't think in new skin we have ever made a claim that is not based on science. And, and, that's, a and that's a challenge we have uh, in, 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 the, in the competitive world. And that is that uh, anybody can make a claim that sounds really appealing and highly attractive, but there's no science behind it. And we don't tend to do that. And, and obviously, uh, this is the uh, the most important step, if you will, in substantiation, because what we say behind the product is what we do uh, to get the data to support it. All right, uh, you've heard Tyler mention about devices. This again, this is our engineering lab. is a is a later development in our R and D engine, if you will. And um, if you recall, we we actually launched a device way back in Pharmanex as well called the biophotonic scanner. Uh, that perhaps is, is an accidental um, sort of focus we, we, we got into new skin uh, because one thing led to another and now we have several devices also in the skin category. And uh, these are some of the uh, some of the equipment that we use. Making devices is not an easy thing and, and I think uh, I'm going to let one of the scientists later uh, to talk to you about the, the most late um, recent device that we're going to launch. But uh, once again, uh, this is, for example, is a cutout uh, of, of the, uh, the Lumi Spa uh, that we launched a couple of years ago. I'm sure many of you have used it. And again, I mean, we, 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 we have engineers who develop this, but at the end of the day, we have other scientists uh, that need to be involved uh, to make sure that it's actually delivering a benefit. You know, I've listed many of them here, uh, but really the message is when you want to talk about really innovation, true innovation, you need uh, several types of scientists coming together. It's not about just one type of scientist. It's really a, a combination of several uh, scientific disciplines and engineering uh, expertise. Uh, to deliver a, a device product, product such as uh, Lumi Spa. So, and, and again, I'll move on to another device. Uh, this would be the galvanic treatment. This would be the galvanic spa. And again, it uses a, a different technology than the Lumi Spa. Here, we use electrical technology, uh, the galvanic technology. And this is where we can help uh, ingredients because ingredients chemically uh, do exist in some kind of 
uh, electrical charge on the surface, and we can take advantage of that to dry or to make sure that the, the ingredients get to the site of action. And the galvanic spa over the years has proven uh, to be a very useful tool, tool uh, to firm up the skin and uh, the face as well. So um, it's, it still continue to be uh, one of the, uh, the device cornerstones. And uh, you can use this together with some of our consumables. Here I'm just illustrating one that's called a Nutriol Intensive uh, Scalp and Hair Serum. And we design, as you can see here, a special head. It's a detachable head that you can put on the galvanic spa. And with that kind of uh, design, you can actually help uh, the Nutriol to get into the scalp. Uh, much more efficiently and effectively. So, and when it does that, the hair gets stronger, it gets uh, really um, a, a better shine to it. You have a healthier scalp, all together it comes together and, and uh, the Nutriol will protect the hair from any uh, free radical damage and so on as well. So a wonderful product that we launched over the last two years, I believe, especially the Nutriol consumable and we redesigned the, uh, the head uh, to make sure that uh, it follows the contour of the scalp to deliver the, uh, the consumable. All right, so here's the H-Log Boost that Tyler alluded to, right? So it's um, the actual size, you can't tell from the picture, but this one is really a travel size uh, kind of device. You can literally drop it into your purse and if you're a man, and I hope uh, all men uh, will use this product as well, or this device, uh, you can drop it into your pocket as well. And um, it's, it, it's again, because of our experience with the Galvanic Spa, we have uh, used that knowledge uh, to develop another type of uh, electrical technology. And this would be the pulsation oscillation technology and I'll show you in a video in a minute. Um, but fundamentally, we can show the use of this device together with the consumable. And this would be uh, some kind of an activating serum. Uh, you would have bouncier, uh, your skin would look brighter, uh, it would be more radiant, and it will be plumper. I think these are the features and benefits. Uh, when they come together, uh, it, will, it will give you a much more useful look uh on, on the face and um it even from some of our preliminary studies um we, we are beginning to see that even a one-time use uh would achieve that kind of uh result and we we really think we we're very excited that uh, this could drive uh become an entry point if you will for another business opportunity all right very simple